1996, Froelen Orozco is a man who embalms the dead for a small fee, providing an affordable rate for those within the El Cartucho area in Bogota, Colombia, an area infamous for its drug trafficking and the frequency of commonplace murder. His process is quick yet rough and has been criticised by other embalmers in the area for damaging the bodies he tends to. A military man at the age of 18 during the Colombian Civil War, the era of La Violencia, and then a police officer who became acquainted with street violence and crime. Death has followed Froelen Orozco throughout his life, and so very little phases him. This is Kiyotaka Surasaki's Orozco the Embalmer, filmed between 1996 and 2000, an infamous Mondo shockumentary due to its unflinching quiet observance in portraying a man tending to the embalming of the dead. Intensely graphic in its filming of the dead, Kiyotaka Surasaki's reputation as a deaf photographer is essential in the creation of this documentary. Surasaki's camera never shines away from the most chilling sights. A murdered woman found beside a playground is taken away, a large crowd gathering, serving as a stark contrast between the innocence of a children's playground and the brutal reality of death at its harshest. The lack of reaction, the manner in which people seem unmoved by the disturbing sight, demonstrates just how commonplace such murders were in El Cartucho, suggesting a sense of desensitisation. If murder and death is commonplace within the streets, it may simply be seen as an everyday occurrence. Orozco's own manner demonstrates the same sense of desensitisation, from serving in the military during the Colombian Civil War in 1952, to a police officer who encountered violent crimes on a frequent basis. Orozco's career path towards becoming an embalmer seems fitting for someone so familiar with death. Death is a natural occurrence, after all we all die, and yet the sights filmed by Orozco the embalmer are bound to chill most viewers. Very few of us share Orozco's own experience and encounters with death. Desensitisation may be commonplace here, but Kiyotaka Surasaki also demonstrates how drug trafficking and poverty are prominent in El Cartucho too. A woman is confronted and frisked by the police for drug possession, a large quantity of drugs confiscated. A man smokes a white substance within his ramshackle den, decorated by found trinkets, hidden away inside a decrepit, dark building. People search through the refuse on the streets for anything of use or value. Kiyotaka Surasaki demonstrates that with such poverty and little economic opportunity, how can people ever escape the vicious cycle of drug trafficking, a cycle so dangerous that it could eventually lead people to a Roscoe's embalming table? It's a bleak, pessimistic perspective, and yet Kiyotaka also observes glimpses of kindness too. A person helps another wash their hands with the water from their bottle. A dog, its hind legs broken, having been hurt by a careless driver, is shown kindness by everyone passing by. In the face of poverty, and the haunting shadow of criminality and murder, there are still people who show signs of kindness and generosity. Through the darkness, there are glimmers of light, and it is these glimmers of light which would motivate people through the adversities they might face here. Kiyotaka Surasaki achieves a lack of sensationalism surrounding death. Death exists, and Surasaki's camera observes quietly and uncomfortably closely, while avoiding inappropriate commentaries and distasteful flourishes which can be commonplace within other shockumentaries such as Traces of Death and Faces of Death. Death isn't treated here as some spectacle for morbid titillation, but as a matter-of-fact truth. This is what Orozco works with. This is the process of handling the dead within an impoverished area, and it's more frequent than we may like to think. It's uncomfortable, it's difficult, and what you see is what you get. When Kiyotaka Surasaki returned to El Cartucho in 1998 to continue filming, he discovered that Froelen Orozco had died. Questioning the neighbourhood locals, it is discovered that Orozco had suffered from a multitude of health complications, including cancer. The only indication of Orozco's dwindling health was the day he was unavailable for filming due to a hospital visit. One of the locals reveals that Orozco, shortly after his hospital visit, went straight back to work and strained so much in lifting the bodies that a hernia formed, nearly rupturing his sutures, which he attempted to hide by tightening his belt around the hernia. It reveals a stubbornness in Orozco that he was unwilling to reveal the extent of his diminishing health and to continue working such laborious work, and yet this stubbornness is contrasted by the significant need for someone to continue providing the embalming service to those in poverty. 
in a mixture of selflessness and persistence, Orozco's encounters through life with death ultimately ends with his own. As Kiyotaka Sorosaki returns once more to El Cartuccio in the year 2000, it is revealed that Orozco's workplace no longer stands, now filmed as an empty lot, a section of which would later become the Tercer Millenio Park, an attempt to clean up the area, yet the park was met with protests due to the lack of planning to move citizens of the El Cartuccio area into other housing. Amidst the rubble of demolished housing and the levelling of Orozco's workplace offers a sombre, sobering observation, just like human life everything must end. In conclusion, Kiyotaka Surasaki's Orozco the Embalmer avoids the pitfalls of trashy shockumentaries by quietly observing its subject, as well as Froilin Orozco's surroundings, detailing the drug trafficking, crime rates and murder that keeps Orozco in business. A bleak portrait of an upsetting world, Orozco provides affordable rates to those who need it, and his process is documented with curiosity for humanity's mortality. Graphic and upsetting, Orozco the Embalmer's evasion of sensationalism is refreshing, even when its portrayal of death is chilling to the bone. A special thank you to my super Patreon supporter Gil, 